Okay, so in this video, we're going to have a look at invoice matching. I'm in the purchases list view, and what I want to do is record an invoice against one of these purchases and see how the matching side of things works. So there's multiple ways of recording an invoice. You can do it this way by clicking batch invoice. You can go new invoice, or you can use the invoices inbox or OCR software. Um, so I'm going to tick this one here for Carrick uh, for 2,700 uh, pounds sterling, um, and I'm going to click batch invoice. So the first question we're asked is, does this order fully match the invoice? So I've got three line items here. Um, and it's really important at this stage that uh, we remember that we have to bring in the line items from the order. That's the fundamental way of matching uh, an invoice and an order. And we don't actually match on a line by line basis. We're only matching on the overall invoice order amount so we're asked the question does this order fully match the invoice so do i have an invoice for 2700 yes or no if we say yes and it's very simple because we only need the invoice number and the invoice date so i'm going to say no so we've got a little bit more uh, functionality here so we can obviously go in and attach pdf and we would expect you to do that um, but let's key in an invoice number so i'll put something in randomly and we we'll choose the invoice date okay so now the line items from the order have come in and the idea here is that this saves you time so if they're all keyed in correctly then and coded correctly then recording the invoice can be very fast because we could just literally go on to next now so we've got an opportunity from a finance perspective or the people who raise the invoices to change the nominal codes or gl codes whatever we call them uh, and any of the other coding but we answer the question yes or no so we can still say well no it doesn't match because actually they charge us 270 pound for that one and they charge us 300 110 for that one so we can adjust the quantities we can adjust the prices but if we delete all of the line items there'll be no matching we have to have the line items in there um, so we uh, can click next now um, we could have our invoice set to say invoices automatic and the workflows are set up to handle differences that's entirely up to personal setups but when we record the invoice, we should record what we see and we should adjust the line items accordingly. Obviously, if your supplier invoices you 10 line items and you've only got three <clears throat> on your purchase order, and that just happens to be the way that they've raised their invoice, like a lot of my suppliers do that actually, then that's absolutely fine. Just don't delete your line items and add a whole bunch of new ones to match. Just make sure the three that you have in some way reflect the total value of the invoice. So we click create invoice. So the invoice is now recorded against the uh, purchase. So there's the invoice number, there's the order number, there's the supplier. So this icon here tells us whether we have a perfect match, 100%, or whether it's um, more than 100% the order value. So the fact that it's more than 100% the order value should really trigger it to go out for approval. So in my example here, it's going into the order difference approval and it will go out um, you know to, to for approval so somebody could take a look at it now if we go into either the invoice or the order what we're looking for is the, the overall invoice order difference so we are at 156 difference here so we purchase ordered gross including tax for 2700 we've got one for 2856 so it could be that you decide to um uh, carry on uh, and process that invoice and export it into your account system or it could be that no that's going to go into dispute and you want to raise a credit note against it so let's have a look at that so if we go back to the dashboard and let's assume now for order 1042 we want to record another uh, invoice against it but this time a credit note so if we were to do it another way we'll go plus new invoice and the supplier was Carrick and the invoice number, we can say it's a credit note. And now if I click on order number, I can choose 1042. And again, all importantly, I need to bring in the line item. So there's our line items that have come over. But this time we we just want to record a, a credit note for 156 pounds. So that's absolutely fine. I could manipulate these line items here. I'm going to leave them in place though. Uh, and I'm going to say that I have got a credit note for 156 and I'll make it easy on the maths. And there's my three 
invoices, there's my invoice, uh, sorry, and there's my three line items, there's my invoice total. I'm going to just record that. Um, I won't have it go out for approval this time, we'll waste time doing that. Don't need to worry about the budgets. And we click create invoice. And there's our two invoices, our invoice and our credit note, and our balance is now at zero. So that's an example of an order with two invoices and how they can be linked together. We could go on and create a third or a fourth or a fifth, or you can create a kind of master purchase order and record multiple invoices against it. But coming back again, the all important thing is to never delete the line items because that will be a problem. Now, if we wanted to reset the matching on this, say that we made a mistake, we can go into um, the invoice or the order, and we should have a button up here that says reset the matching. So let's see what happens when we do that. Uh, select the order to unmatch, confirm. So our very first um, invoice that we created, that one there, we've now effectively delinked it from the purchase order. So if we go back to the purchase view and we go to our uh, purchase order 1042, now what we've got, the only thing that we've got against it is the credit note of 156 leaving a balance of 2856. So all is not lost. If you if you mess up the linking of an order and an invoice, you can still reset it and you can do it from both the um, purchase order or the invoice. So uh, if we went reset matching on this order, we could remove the credit note from it as well. So I hope that's been useful. Um, I hope that's explained the way that we do invoice matching. Now, if you're sat here watching this video and you're thinking, hang on a minute, why don't you do line by line matching? Uh, then I would ask you to jump onto our um, customer portal. So if you go to the knowledge base and you go into the community section, uh, see if you, you know, please add a topic or please find one of the topics and and put, put your kind of thoughts into that because we fully expect to add in line by line matching in early 2020 and we've got our ideas how to do it but we'd quite like to um, your thoughts on that as well so it's it's a feature that's coming um, uh, but actually to be honest with you the profile of the customers that uh, use Zahara they tend to be people who work with overheads and expenses rather than stock and although they'll do receipting of quantities the lot the the kind of overall invoice order matching based on value suits them really, really well. But we're looking to broaden the customer base as best as we can. So line by line matching, something that's very much coming your way. Thanks.